Hi, my name is Henry Ellis. I'm a pediatric sports surgeon here at Scottish Rite for children. Today I'm here with my daughter Wynn, so we're going to take off our masks and I'm going to show you how to do a hip exam. A couple things before we get started. I'm going to do two exams. One of them is an efficient exam for the primary care provider to go over athletic injuries in the hip. Second time I do a hip, I'm going to do a little bit more detailed fashion and talk about why I do each individual maneuver. Couple things. For the purposes of today, my daughter's got some tights on, but I would strongly encourage you guys to, to use some shorts so that you can be sure to visualize some skin areas and areas of swelling, particularly when you're doing this exam. So wearing some paper shorts can really help you look at some of those more sensitive areas. Second thing, I always recommend examining both hips. It really can help you distinguish one versus another. The other thing when looking at hip pain is to look for other pathology including intra-abdominal pathology, as young adolescents may have things like ovarian cysts, appendicitis, or hernias that you don't want to miss. Also, don't forget that oftentimes spine problems can cause hip pain. So to be sure to consider those as a part of your differential when you're doing your exam. Are you ready, Wynn? Yes. All right, first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna get you to take off your shoes. All right, Wynn, let's just see how you walk. Take a couple steps towards me if you could. Great, take a, take a couple steps away from me. There you go, go ahead and stop there. Come right back here. All right, I'm gonna have you turn and face the door if you could. All right, go down and bend your toe, uh, bend and touch your toes if you could. All right, come back up, great. Stand on your right foot. Stand on your left foot. Great, your feet together. All right, I'm gonna just push in a couple spots to see if you're tender there, up here. Now, Wynn, just tell me if you're tender anywhere. Right back here, here, or there. Okay, turn around and face me if you could. Spread your feet out just a little bit more. Put your arms out and give me a squat. Great, come back down. Stand on your right leg for me, do a single leg squat. Come back up, switch, do a squat on your other side. Great, perfect. Okay, let's get you to lie down on the bed with the head over there for me if you could. All right, I'm gonna pull this bed out so you can be sure to look at both legs. All right, let's just take a look here. All right. Hold this leg straight up for me, don't let me push it down, real strong. Okay, do it one more time. Does that hurt? No. Okay. Does that hurt through there? No. Okay. All right. Tenderness here. No. Here? No. Here? No. Here? No. Okay, great. Try to pull your knees together. Push them apart. Great. Put your knees together. Go ahead and do a sit-up for me. Come down. Does that hurt at all? No. Okay, great. And relax there. Go ahead and roll over towards the wall if you could. Hold this leg straight up for me. Don't let me push it down. All right, great. All the way over. There you go. Relax here for me. All right. Tenderness here? No. What about right here? No. Okay, great. Roll in your stomach for me. Okay. Any tenderness right here? No. Okay, great. Can you try to hold this leg up for me real strong? Don't let me push it down. All right, great. Go ahead and sit up for me. Not too bad. No. All right. Part one, that's a very quick screening exam of the hip. Right now I'm going to go over things in a little bit more detail and obviously if your differential diagnosis or you find something, a pertinent positive part of your exam, then I would consider diving in a little bit further in that direction. So we're going to go into a little bit more detail in just a second. We're going to start over and go through a more thorough exam explaining each parts of the clinical exam.
All right, this is part two of the exam of a young athletic hip. I'm gonna do it in just a bit more detail just to explain why I do each maneuver. All right, let's get started. When is standing over the wall, I'm gonna ask you just to take a couple steps towards me. What I'm looking for is a normal heel to toe gait. I wanna make sure that she's not swaying. Go ahead and turn around the other direction. I really like it from behind because typically you can see if her body sways to one direction or another, demonstrating weakness of her hip abductors. I'm also looking to make sure she has a normal heel to toe gait, uh, that, she's not, uh, that she's not toe walking or demonstrating any other supinated uh, position of her foot as she walks. Okay, I'm gonna get you to take a couple steps towards me, turn around and face the wall. I find this is not only a good way to not only examine the hip, but to look for any leg length inequalities, I can do this by putting my hands on the iliac crest here. I also make sure that both of her legs are extended and you don't have one leg extended and one leg straight that would indicate a leg length inequality. I also can check for the overall alignment either from the front or from the back. Go ahead and bend down and touch your toes. I, like, I think this is a great way to examine a young adolescent's back to make sure that there's no curvatures or a rib hump that would be indicative uh, for scoliosis or perhaps a scoliosis screening. It also demonstrates a little bit of flexibility. Go ahead and stand up for me. Great opportunity to look for areas of tender to palpation. You got her greater trochanter, which you can have some apophysitis of the greater trochanter. I move my hands up to the iliac crest. As I'm here, I'll march back through the iliac crest in which they can have some apophysitis. I go all the way to the edge, and oftentimes uh, you then can feel the sacroiliac joint. This can be tender for sacroiliitis, or uh, they can either be infectious or an inflammatory arthropathy. I then go through up the mid portion of her back as I go up here and see if there's any tenderness. And then I like to go down the paraspinal muscles as well, uh, looking at it from her back. Okay, go ahead and turn around and face me. I'm gonna back up a little bit. Another opportunity to look at her overall alignment. Go ahead and spread your feet shoulder width apart, perch your hands up and go ahead and do a squat. This just tells me what her strength is like. Whether she can do this uh, right now uh, may be indicative of whether she has an injury, an overuse injury. Sometimes I wanna know if she has pain as she goes down, which may be a sign of impingement, or pain as she comes up, which may be a sign of tendonitis or an inflammatory process of her apophysitis. Okay, go ahead and stand on uh, your right leg first. Go ahead and, and bend down for me. Come back up. Switch over to your left, do the same thing. I think this is a really good test to look for overall strength of her hip and, hips and her core. You can tell when here, she's a soccer player, but as she does a single leg squat, you can see how her knee starts to collapse towards the midline and in indicating um, that she can have some hip and core weakness. Do that for me one more time so they can see that. Right on your right. See how her knee collapses towards the midline? Sometimes we think this may be uh, a sign of a risk factor uh, for a knee injury. So we're gonna have to work on Wynn's hip and core strength. All right, Wynn, let's get you to lie down here. I'm gonna pull the table out. Go ahead and lie down for me. Great. First thing you gotta do is just inspect, look for any areas of um, inflammation. If she has some paper shorts on, I may pull those paper shorts up here so I can look for any signs of bulging or skin rashes. Um, I like to just take a general inspection. What I like to do, I just wanna see kinda of how loose she is. So I'm just gonna kinda of move her, her legs around. You can see that this, this leg kinda of wants to naturally uh, fall to the outside. It may be some signs of some uh, capsular laxity. Sometimes if you have a patient that rests uh, with external rotation, this may be relaxing the capsule and a sign of synovitis. So it's something to consider as well. If I'm really trying to figure out if there's inflammation within the hip joint, go ahead and relax here. I might just try to do a simple, um, simple rotation through here just to look to see if there's any synovitis. Any, most of the hip conditions and injuries that we see in the hip, this oftentimes will not cause a lot of pain as you're just doing very passive circumduction exercises. But if she has inflammation within the joint, uh, it certainly can. Okay, here, hold that leg straight up for me. Don't let me push it down, okay? All right. So what I'm doing there is I'm really trying to resist her hip flexors. Oftentimes in young athletes, particularly soccer players, we'll see some inflammation of her hip flexors or the apophysis uh, around her hip joint as well. And that can uh, recreate uh, some pain as well. As I flex the hip up, go ahead and relax this leg, yep. So as I flex the hip up, I'm just kind of, uh, I'm gen uh, generally looking at the position of her leg as it falls into a neutral position with wind here. 
In pediatrics, oftentimes we really worry about the kid who has obligate external rotation. If you see, I'm creating that with wind. As I flex it up, her hip naturally externally rotates. Now that is a condition that we really worry about, or it may be a screening on clinical exam for a slipped capital femoral epiphysis, so, or a skiffy for short. So flexing your hip up can oftentimes tell me quite a bit uh, of information. I like to look at rotation, so her hip is at a 90 degree angle, as is her knee. I will internally rotate, I will externally rotate. Oftentimes internal rotation is about 30 degrees, external rotation is about 60 degrees. This is pretty common in a young adolescent, plus or minus about 20 degrees. While I'm here, I'll go ahead and push her knee towards the center of her body and I'll rotate her foot out. We call this the impingement sign. Now it can happen at any range of flexion as I'll push towards the midline here. It's internal rotation and adduction, and we call that an anterior impingement sign. And that would be a positive anterior impingement sign if she finds that that either pinches or causes pain through there. I like to go from an internal rotated position to an external rotated position in an extended position. I'm trying to see if her hip snaps. Oftentimes that'll recreate an internal snapping hip or the iliopsoas. So you can see I gather a lot of information just by flexing up the hip and moving it around. I would just note that if you have differences in motion from one leg to another one, that may be a sign of osteonecrosis or perthes. And so I do think a comparative exam is always really, really important. I like to put her leg into a figure four position because what this does is it really opens up the hip joint to allow me to look for areas of tenderness to palpation. This is a great opportunity to do an intra-abdominal exam if you're worried about things like an ovarian cyst, appendicitis, or even a hernia from here. I like to start my hip exam by palpating the brony prominences on the ASIS, which you can feel on almost anybody. And you can go posterior to this down the iliac crest. If you go just inferior to this, what you'll see is you can feel a muscle mass right through here. Now that, those are her hip flexors. You oftentimes will see kids that'll have either an injury to the muscle, the tendon, or the apophysis, which is the growth plate that it inserts onto. So I'll oftentimes see a lot of kids have an injury here. If I go just midline, there's a little bit of a soft triangle right through there, and that goes right down onto her hip joint. If she has any labral tears, uh, stress fractures, any irritation in the hip, she'll have tenderness right here. And then many times her adductor longus is right here and that can recreate some tenderness and, in, and be indicative of a soft tissue injury. Bend your knees up for me. It's another way to look at some strength. Go ahead and push your knees towards me. Great. And away, looking at abduction and adduction strength. Go ahead and squeeze my fist with your legs. I'm gonna push my finger uh, right on her pelvis. Go ahead and do another sit up for me. This is, um, this is a clinical exam for a sign of a sports hernia or athletic pubalgia. It's really in the order, older adolescence. I see it more commonly in football players, and that will recreate some tenderness through there. All right, Wynn. I'm going to get you to go ahead and face that wall for me. Really common in kids with knee pain, patellofemoral pain, is when they have hip and adductor, hip abductor weakness and core weakness. And this is a pretty good sign to look for, or pretty good test to look for hip abductor weakness. So go ahead and push up if you can. Go ahead and do really hard, really strong, really strong, really strong. Again, we knew that she had some weakness from this when we saw her do a single leg squat. So we'll have to work on that a little bit when. All right, I'm gonna extend her hip. As you can extend it here, this is called an Ober test. It looks for IT band tightness. Now you can see when here, I cannot put her knee on the table because her IT band is so tight. Her IT band goes from the iliac crest, is a tight band, it's a thickening of the fascia that goes all the way down through here to Gertie's tubercle and a portion over the patella. You can feel how tight it is on her, and we see a lot of runners that'll have some IT band pain. They can even have some popping when they walk uh, over her greater troch there. Another opportunity to look for some areas of tenderness to palpation. I got the greater trochanter right there. I'm gonna push her knee forward. You can feel back here, both of the gluteus and the piriformis. You can feel a soft spot right before you get to her big um, gluteus maximus muscle through here. If you didn't do it before, it's another opportunity to examine her spine as well as her sacroiliac joint. Okay, go ahead and roll over on your stomach for me. Okay. Looking from behind, this is where I really like to look at rotation. Um, we know that kids that are um, in towers, 
um, or that have femoral version, a prone position is really the best way to look for femoral antiversion. And you can see here, when is just right about, right about 45 degrees, maybe a little less than that. Some kids that like to sit in a W, you can really detect it on that prone exam. The other, the other uh, benefit of looking at it prone is it allows me to look at the thigh foot angle. If they have a lot of tibial torsion, you'll find that their foot really is externally rotated or even internally rotated. When here, as I hold her malleolus between my two fingers, I uh, put a little bit of pressure. You can see I can create an angle between her foot and her thigh. Hers about 20 degrees externally rotated and very, very normal. We see a lot of kids that may have some hamstring apophysitis or injuries. I like to push on the, um, the ischial tuberosity right through here. This is where her hamstrings insert to see if she has any tenderness uh, right in through here. If you do suspect that, go and flex this leg for me real strong if you could. Great. You can feel it through here. That may recreate some pain or as I'll do is hold your hip up real strong for me. And don't let me push it down from here. Great. That, though, both of those tests can be really good um, to really detect if she has any hamstring issues um, or injuries, either both overuse um, or uh, an injury. Go ahead and lay on your side one more time. Roll over that uh, the other way for me, if you could. If you find a young kid who has a lot of um, impingement signs as well as hip instability, I find the distinction in the, in the lateral position to be really helpful. What I'll do is I'll grab their leg, I'll externally rotate as I, as I abduct their leg, I'll put it in this position. And what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to put pressure on the hip joint anteriorly to see if this gives, if this gives her any discomfort or pain. You can see I'm, I'm externally rotating quite aggressively here just to see if it creates any pain or if it just feels like a stretch. If it does give some pain, it may be indicative of an unstable hip or one that just has a little bit of instability to it. I can also distinguish this, I'm gonna put your arms here, with impingement pain. And I can go straight into an impingement position where I flex her hip up, I internally rotate as I a deduct the knee to say, hey, does this hurt instead? And distinguishing between the two can often help us not only determine what the problem is, but also how to solve it either with the right physical therapy exercises and not commonly in this age group do they need surgery. Okay, go ahead and sit up for me. The most common injuries that we see are generally overuse injuries in the hip. We do many times see hip impingement, hip instability, or labral tears. The ones that we really want to not miss is a slip caporeformal epiphysis, perthes, as well as an infection or synovitis. So hopefully that gives you a little bit of an introductory uh, physical exam of the hip for the young athlete who has hip pain, uh, particularly for the primary care provider.